Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? Okay, cool. Um, so, hi, I'm, I'm Paul, this is Megna. Uh, we're from Booking.com. Uh, we thought we'd come and say hi to you guys today and, and talk about how the CV is dead. So, we thought we'd uh, go through a couple of uh, do's and don'ts and, and how to basically build a CV and build a holistic profile of yourself. So, first off, um, what we wanted to go through is what not to do on a CV. So, grave mistakes. So, first off, um, this slide's about having too much information on your CV. So, a man known only as Eric submitted one of the funniest CVs of recent memory. Uh, he said he was uh, someone that would claw his way to the top uh, using any means necessary uh, and then be a fair and just ruler once he reached the top. He also listed ESP and sexy dancing as employable attributes um, and also under experience he, excite, uh, he cites very fast metabolism and enough knowledge to write an essay on pretty much any subject without researching it. So maybe just sharing a bit too much information there. Uh, the next slide is a grave mistake. So it's always really good to uh, target specific companies that you want to work with uh, during your job search. Um, you should learn about them and what's happening on, uh, with them in the news, um, what the company's financial state's like, um, and it's always a good idea to get leads on uh, who's interviewing for the job and, and sort of who's posting for this position. Um, but one overeager job seeker noticed the technical director of a company had died and then mistook this as a chance to get his foot in the door by applying for the deceased person's job with the death certificate attached to the CV. So definitely something to avoid. Next, um, make sure you really pay attention to detail. So it's always a good idea to reach out to the recruiter or hiring manager for a d job directly. Um, it's not such a good idea to attach a, pic a picture of Nicolas Cage instead of your CV. So make sure you pay attention to detail. And here's some things uh, how to stand out and, and what to do whilst uh, building a profile. So um, I think what Paul described all the scenarios were more about uh, you know, how to stand out because sometimes when you're applying to a job and uh, you've seen a job on a website or on, a, uh, you know, on, on say LinkedIn or some network and it's like your dream job, you really want to uh, get a foot in the door. So a lot of people think about how to differentiate themselves and essentially that's what interviewing is all about. There's a large candidate pool and how do you stand out? Um, so sometimes you can get overzealous and do all the wrong things to stand out. So all those examples were about what not to do. And now we want to present you like a toolkit um, for all the things that you can do to stand out in a good way and uh, get yourself noticed essentially. Um, now there are, it's not like a long list of like 10 or 15 things that you can do. Um, just simple five things. Um, if you actually, if you do these, uh, if you're genuine about them, if you really uh, uh, like go by the book, you would be noticed by the right people and uh, it's quite possible that you might land your job, your dream job quite soon. Um, the first thing uh, that we wanted to show to you, the first bit of the toolkit is your LinkedIn profile. Now a lot of people um, earlier used to saying that their CV is, uh, is as good as it gets and uh, it's just that their CV that they have to work on, make sure you put the right things in your CV, make sure you use the right sentences and you get your dream job. Well, it's not really like that anymore. Uh, even more important than your CV is sometimes your LinkedIn profile because that is your first point of contact with a recruiter most of the times. Um, so for example, Paul and I, now if we have to like hire uh, an Android developer, for example, we will go onto LinkedIn, uh, we will type in the keywords, and we look at all the profiles that match uh, what we are looking for. And when we go into a profile, we would uh, like to see what has this person done, um, and that's the recruiter view. Like, what has your career history been like? Uh, are you a potential fit with what we are looking for? Uh, do people like you on the job? So if you, if you are existing LinkedIn users, you would know that it's a really dynamic uh, platform to showcase your skills. Uh, you can put in your project details, exactly. You can put in a summary of what you've done. You can list all your employers, what you've done with each one of them. Um, you can also put in recommendations uh, of people that you worked with who really liked what you did. Uh, and all of these are really powerful. When a recruiter looks at all of them, um, uh, then they know that, yeah, this is possibly a person who's done well in their career, who's been exposed to a lot of different projects, and therefore uh, could possibly be a good fit. 
Um, some no-nos for LinkedIn are things like, because it's a business networking pro, uh, like a site, so a lot of people put in like things like cat photos or things that should just be in your personal social media and not really uh, in a business profile. So just be careful of that. It should be professional. Um, it should showcase um, as much about you and what you've done as you can. So make the effort and uh, create a good LinkedIn profile. Uh, Paul will now give you a demonstration of two examples of what are good LinkedIn profiles. Great. So as, uh, as Meghna just mentioned, um, yeah, just going through a couple of um, profiles that, that make a great LinkedIn profile. So as you can see, Ashraf uh, Bashir, who, who currently works with us at Booking.com, um, you can see that overall in the summary, he lists his technical experience, um, what, uh, what development languages he uses, um, and sort of a brief generic overview of, of sort of what he does and positions that he, uh, he enjoys and you know, finds challenging. Um, then moving down, you look at his most current experience, and he, he lists in detail exactly what he's been doing at his recent um, employer, so at Booking.com, going through you know step by step uh, in terms of exactly what he's been doing while, whilst whilst being at Booking.com. Previously, before that, you can see again that uh, he lists the technologies that, that he's been using, as well as uh, some of the projects that he's been doing at his previous company. So that's an outstanding LinkedIn profile there, uh, and something that you know you, you guys should copy. A following profile is a guy called Andre, who also works at Booking.com. Um, you can see that, once again, he has like a, an overview of what he's been doing and, and what he enjoys to do, his uh, technical skill set, so the, the main programming languages and technologies he's been using, uh, what he's interested in, uh, and then here it lists uh, what, exactly what he's been doing at Booking.com, and then previously before that it lists exactly what he's been doing at, at other companies. So once again, a really good LinkedIn profile there and something to, to definitely look out for. Okay, so, well, that was your LinkedIn profile, and a lot of people already know about it, that, well, yeah, if you want to be noticed by a recruiter, by your company, by the right company, you need to have a LinkedIn profile, but what a lot of people do not realize is that today, um, everything is so connected that you can't just have presence on one medium and not care about the other, um, so even, uh, even though like, Twitter and Facebook are more like social media, more personal, but you must be careful about what you post in your public profiles. And, um, and more than being careful, sometimes these can be really good ways to get noticed and stand out in a crowd. Uh, for example, Twitter is, uh, is an excellent example of how you can tweet about things that are important to you, that matter to you, uh, that you're passionate about. Um, now, like, in today's world, like in, at least in all the progressive companies and all the progressive international companies, it's not just about like uh, having a robotic profile. Like, well, this is what you do, these are your skills, and that's it. Um, the companies want to know who you are as a person. Uh, that's equally important because if you're going to be a colleague, I want to know how it would be to work with you. Um, and, the way, uh, and one way where you can showcase that is actually through your public profiles, uh, through uh, social media. Um, and if you're a great colleague, if you have the skill set, which a recruiter would have checked on LinkedIn, uh, if you have a great Twitter profile where you tweet to uh, maybe your companies that you're following, um, uh, you, you, will, you are bound to get noticed. Uh, and Paul will again show you uh, a Twitter profile uh, of how you can actually use this medium to, uh, to stand out. So once again, um, yeah, a couple of guys from Booking.com that, that we're showcasing again. Um, you can see on his Twitter following, he's got uh, over a thousand Twitter followers. He's always uh, tweeting about things that are important to him, things that he enjoys, uh, technical problems that, that he's faced previously. Also tweeting at other um, well-known members in, in sort of the Pearl community. Um, so to get yourself noticed and, and you know, to showcase what you're passionate about uh, and showcase uh, things uh, that you enjoy. Uh, another Twitter profile that we have here is Sawyer X, who's quite well-known in the Pearl community. Um, yeah, you can see that he really showcases his uh, personality, who he is, things that he enjoys, uh, and things that he's passionate about. Um, he also, you know, t retweets um, people that he finds, you know, inspirational, um, and sort of retweets uh, funny anecdotes to, to, to enjoy as well. So to really showcase your personality. And um, another. Uh, uh, 
digital you know, tool in your toolkit is uh, our sites like Stack Overflow, GitHub, uh, your own personal technical blog maybe. Um, today, it's not just about you know, social media and business networking, but also showcasing the kind of work that you're interested in, that you've done, apart from what you're uh, paid to do. So we all have jobs where, uh, you know, which we want to get into, but maybe we don't have the you know, absolutely right experience for. And these forums are like a great way to showcase your interest, uh, to showcase all your side projects, uh, all the things that you're passionate about, work-wise, technically, uh, which you might not have had a chance to do uh, in your day-to-day -day job. Uh, more and more, uh, these forums are being used by companies, by recruiters, to, start, uh, to spot the top talent. Uh, if, if, uh, if, you, if you catch the catch a recruiter's eye, or maybe even a hiring manager's eye by, your, uh, by the questions that you post, by the, by the replies that you give, by the number of followers that you have, uh, by the number of uh, projects that you have, um, it, it's very likely that you might be approached by recruiters. If you already have really active GitHub accounts, you might have already uh, faced that, that you've been contacted by people saying, I really liked your work there. Uh, would you be interested to have a chat? Would you like to work with us? It's becoming increasingly common. It's not as common as, say, a LinkedIn, but, uh, but this is like uh, really the upcoming thing now. Uh, a lot of you, I think, already have GitHub accounts. And in fact, I got a question uh, when we were at the booth uh, saying that, you know, is GitHub uh, equivalent to experience? And that was a really interesting question. Um, it might not be completely equivalent to actual work experience, especially for a student, but it can definitely, um, uh, you know, uh, it can definitely be like a seasoning on your, on your work. So, uh, so, it, so definitely go ahead, make your uh, account uh, and like try and showcase your tech work. If not on these sites, have your own tech blog and blog about things. Uh, and Bob will show you a demonstration. So yeah, once again, showing off uh, Damien and Sawyer. So as you can see from Damien's um, GitHub account, uh, he's obviously got a lot of public contributions. So you know he's really passionate about what he does. You know he spends his spare time uh, developing. Um, and if you look at his popular repositories, he's had over 173 like stars. So you know the work that he does is valid and, and sort of used by other people. Uh, very often, um, when you know looking for candidates. Uh, the first thing that I'll do is go to the GitHub account and show it to uh, some of the hiring managers so the hiring managers can assess their code uh, before they've even done a technical interview. So really pay attention to your GitHub. And once again with Sawyer, really similar situation. You can see that he's uh, really passionate about what he, what he does. A lot of public contributions and once again, um, very popular repositories with, with 71 stars. So you know people are you know, using his work and um, finding it valuable. He also runs a, uh, a tech blog as well, so uh, really showcasing how passionate he is about the Pell community and, and about what he does. And now we finally come to the traditional uh, resume, the CV, the job application that you actually make to a, uh, to a company. Uh, now it's really, I'm sure a lot of you are thinking, why is their top title? The CV is dead. Like, is it really dead? The fact is, it's not dead, of course. I mean, it is still uh, the formal application that you make to, uh, to a company. But uh, it used to, there used to be a time where it used to be the most important thing, and now it's just like one piece in the puzzle. So you have to have presence in all of uh, the different areas. You need to have like a more holistic profile, uh, socially, technically, business-wise. And then that's like the final piece where you, uh, you know, give your snapshot of all the things that you have done, all the things that you're interested in, all the things that you can do. And that's like uh, just like a foot in the door where um, a, a recruiter looks at your CV and where you've listed all the other things that you've done. So all the things that we spoke about, you know, you should always list your LinkedIn profile on your CV. You should always, uh, uh, you know, post your GitHub Stack Overflow accounts, any uh, tech blogs that you have. Uh, so a recruiter is then interested to actually go and check those out. So they're like um, a medium to showcase your overall profile. Um, also, like traditional uh, good sense uh, about writing a CV still prevails. So a lot of what Paul said, and then uh, things like make it uh, make it personal. Don't make it robotic. Like uh, like I say, don't say, well, you know, Meghna has been doing this or has been doing that. Like third person CVs. Write more about. Well, I'm passionate about this. This is what I've done. Uh, this is uh, this is what I would like to do. This is how I would add value. So make it like a very compelling statement. Uh, make it very directed to what the job is. Uh, a lot of people make the mistake of just like spraying out their CVs yeah, everywhere. Try not to do that. Try. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, so hopefully you can hear me better. Um, so, um, yeah, try and make it directed. Try and, uh, 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 yeah, well, I lost my thought, train of thought now. Um, so, yeah, it's like the final um, piece in the puzzle. Let your personality shine through your CV. Shall we, um, okay, yeah. Um, yeah, so in the end, it's all about making it come together. Um, use all the tools that you have in your toolkit. Reach out to recruiters personally. It's still, uh, it's very old world, but it still holds true. A, uh, a lot of times personal contact is what really seals the deal. Uh, if you try and uh, talk to someone, they would always, they're likely to remember you. When you, uh, when you speak with a recruiter or with anybody from the company that you want to work for, uh, have, have, have a script in mind, like know what, what is it that you want, what is it that you bring to the table, all these things um, always matter. Uh, reach out to them on LinkedIn, reach out to them through other forums, uh, follow them on Facebook. I think most companies nowadays have their official pages. If you follow them, then you know what's happening with the company. It's a good idea to know what the company is doing to start off with, of course. Um, so yeah, our, all, these, uh, um, uh, all these things still stand true. Uh, that's what I put in the slide. Um, use all possible resources to create your overall profile. Use GitHub to, uh, and your personal tech blog to showcase the depth of your work. Use LinkedIn to showcase the breadth of your work and show the highlights. Uh, use Twitter to showcase your personality. And use the paper, paper resume to bring it all together. Um, and a lot of people say they want to create the perfect profile. Uh, that's more like a, a, like a unicorn. It doesn't exist. Um, a profile should be uh, a, present, a representation of you, your individuality. If it's genuine, it is likely to make an impact. So, okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it doesn't exist. Well, I can. Um, well, on the last slide, you can finally hear me. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, just uh, present a whole 360 view of you. Like I said, if it's genuine, it's likely to make an impact. Um, now we'll just uh, take any questions that you might have. Um, anybody for a question? Yeah, does anybody have any questions that they'd like to find out a, a bit more about? Yeah, go ahead. So, here's a common but uh, controversial question. So, um, uh, should you use, should one use third party per, uh, third person pronoun for the uh, for the linking summary or first person pronoun? Um, I think it's a lot to do with personal style. Some people I know do prefer the third party, uh, but I think uh, what we are talking about is like if you look at progressive uh, recruitment and like more international companies, it's all about showcasing yourself, and it is a bit hard to showcase yourself if you speak about yourself in the third person. Uh, because you always feel like, well, this person has done that. You cannot say this person is passionate about that. That doesn't ring as true as, uh, well, I'm passionate about Perl or I'm passionate about C++. This is what I've done. That's more talking directly to the person and is likely to have more impact than a third person thing. It's not a no-no for sure, but it definitely has more impact if you don't use that. Any other question? Uh, to make up for the mistake I made, <laughs> uh, I'll ask a summarizing question. So uh, you said the CV is that don't try to uh, rely on it too much. But we know a lot of uh, traditional recruiting mechanisms still rely on the CV a lot, especially the recruiters will start with the CV. So would you say uh, it would be a fair summary of your presentation to make the CV as you said, uh, make, the make it a highlight, right? Make the CV your homepage. And on there, you have links to your LinkedIn profile, to your Facebook profile, and to your GitHub and uh, uh, Stack Overflow profile, and so on. Yeah, definitely. That's like a really perfect way of like, kind of winding it up. Uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, that's what a CV should be about. It should be a snippet of all that you've done, uh, highlighting all the main points of your career, all the things that you're really proud about, and then with links to showcase your more holistic, more overall profile. And that's in fact one of the mistakes that people make, that they would just put in like a bucket list of all the questions and projects that they've done, uh, which is like a really big mistake because nobody wants to read a 20-page resume. Uh, it's more, it's better to have like a one-page or a two-page resume with all the highlights and 
make the recruiter actually go to all the other things that you've done and like make it compelling. So yeah, definitely. That can also increase the page view of all your profiles, right? Absolutely, yeah, definitely. <laughs> so uh, there's another question. In Taiwan and uh, most Asian societies, the uh, companies recruiting people will ask for too much information on the CV, actually. They want your ID number, your address, your marital status, number of kids, and uh, <laughs> a lot of those. And what's your view in uh, I wouldn't say combating this situation, but uh, rectifying this situation. I mean, we should, we, we are a uh, somewhat powerful society to start a movement to clean up the CV, to ask people to list only the things they are required for the job, right? And uh, my company is actually doing that. We have a recruiting booth, right? Okay, no, never mind. <laughs> uh, we'll check. We, we come by a booth. Yeah, so. Uh, uh, I would imagine a company like Booking.com will do that uh, in terms of like uh, equal opportunity employment, uh, all of that. Uh, but how would you recommend that we, as a bunch of programmers and developers and uh, data scientists, iOS, Android pl product owner, and so on, to uh, start a movement to ask the companies in Taiwan to clean up their acts in terms of recruiting and asking for information? I think, um, you know, uh, a really passive approach would, would probably work best here. So make sure your online profiles are um, really up to date, so your LinkedIn, GitHub, and everything like that. And obviously, the, the, the better companies will, will definitely attract the talent. So uh, eventually, um, you know, uh, as time progresses, only the best companies will be getting the best people with, with the with the more efficient recruitment process. So that should help like rectify the problem sort of eventually. So just make sure everything's up to date and uh, make sure you have like your technical skill set and things like that. So they can really showcase how good of a developer you are. Um, that way, you know, the best companies find you first. And to add to, add to that, also it's really surprising to hear that because in a lot of companies it's actually illegal to ask for things like that, like uh, you know your marital status or the number of kids uh, on the CV. So it's like if it's not related to the job, you can't ask those questions. So it's really surprising to me to actually hear that. Uh, what Paul said, uh, yeah, of course, like a passive approach, and also I would say just like take some data that uh, a lot of other company uh, countries uh, actually it's illegal, it's not related to the job. Uh, maybe just you know speak with. Uh, I'm sure there are these HR industry. Uh, chambers and you know those kind of things where you can go and speak with the people who uh, lead all these uh, the HR and all these companies maybe you can also talk about, talk to them about it uh, backed by data of course of how it's not even relevant in a lot of companies and countries thank you for your question is there any other question yep oh, hi uh, I want to ask some strange question uh, do, do company companies now Seeing that the traditional traditional CV is a lie, that he he can uh, can uh, trust the 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 information on the traditional CV, so they need some some um, websites or something that some Facebook tweets to know what to about these people. Um, no, not necessarily, because obviously, you know, uh, things like references, people still reference check and find out uh, a bit more about your previous work. Um, but a lot of candidates that we speak to are, are passive candidates, so they don't actively apply. So that's why things like your GitHub and LinkedIn and, and that being all up to date uh, and very well put together um, definitely attracts, um, uh, attracts um, uh, employers as opposed to you having to actively go out and seek for an opportunity. Uh, a lot of the time, the opportunity may seek you out. Thanks very much for the question. And yeah, I think that's, that's about it. Yeah. Okay. Great. All right, then, thank you so much for your time. Uh, if you have any other questions or if you need uh, any personal help with your resume or if you need advice, uh, feel free to drop by our booth. Uh, we are really, really happy to have a chat with you. And, um, and yeah, that's it. Thank you. Enjoy your evening. <laughs>